Welcome to the ABI Snapshot, where we spotlight critical findings and the latest research from our global team of analysts. In this snapshot, we're speaking with Smart Urban Infrastructure Vice President, Dominique Fonte. Dom will answer key questions about his latest report on smart poles and street light platforms. Welcome, Dom. Hi, Deb. Thanks for having me today. Ah, my pleasure. So, your report highlights that smart poles will become a key de deployment framework for urban infrastructure and will reach an installed base of almost 11 million by 2030. Can you explain? Sure. So smart poles are essentially multi-aggregation or concentration or convergent points for what we refer to as smart urban infrastructure. And they are built on top of Smart street lights, uh, other types of utility poles could be um, electricity poles or other types of urban uh, uh, furniture, as some people refer to that. So we believe that by the end of this decade, by 2030, they will have become a key deployment paradigm for uh, smart city systems with an installed base uh, amounting to more than 10 million and annual, annual revenues of around $60 billion. Uh, so quite, quite an important uh, uh, new paradigm, uh, we believe, for smart cities. There are similar aggregation points, such as smart kiosks, and some of the systems you see at intersections and, and junctions, but obviously, you know, street lights and smart poles are the most ubiquitous form of urban furniture and are, as such, the ideal platform for deploying a smart urban infrastructure. Which leads me to my next question. What is the relevance of smart poles for smart cities? Yeah, we think the relevance is quite big and I kind of hinted at uh, it already. Uh, I mean, we think they are going to play a very important role in accelerating the deployment of smart city solution. And everybody knows adoption has been uh, quite slow so far due to a lot of fragmentation, uh, disparate approaches. What I think smart poles can offer is a more efficient, a more scalable and a more modular framework for deploying, not just deploying, but also maintaining that whole spectrum of smart urban infrastructure. It's important to realize that we're talking about quite a large set of functionalities ranging from 5G small cells, Wi-Fi hotspots, surveillance and traffic cameras, uh, roadside vehicle to infrastructure units. It could be signage and information displays. Also very important are environmental sensors or air quality noise and flood monitoring solutions. But also, um, very importantly, by the way, charging points for not just uh, regular four-wheel electric vehicles, also for two-wheel vehicles and even for drones. In Seoul, a smart pole uh, solution is being trialed that will allow or accommodate uh, drones landing on a platform uh, to be charged. So amongst all these other uh, elements, they could also uh, generate renewable energy, something referred to often as solar street lights and poles. So they actually can generate their own renewable energy to power uh, uh, that whole range of uh, urban infrastructure. So yeah, you know, th this looks like a real important framework for the future, we think. Wow. So what's the main driver behind smart pole deployment? Yeah, that's an interesting question. Um, actually, uh, we believe it's going to be the telco industry. So the telco industry is in a uh, big need for finding many more sites to enable what often is referred to as network densification for 5G and even more so for future 6G small cells. So due to the, the higher frequencies used uh, for these uh, new forms of cellular uh, communication, the range of the base station will be a lot smaller. So they need more base stations and obviously smart poles is kind of the obvious way to look for, um, you know, ways to deploy a, a lot more uh, cellular base stations. As such, this is then also going to be uh, a new way for cities to fund additional uh, smart city system deployments. In other words, we think that the telco industry 
will at least partially uh, fund or subsidize not just their own equipment, so the 5G or 6G small cells, but the wider you know, modular hardware that is uh, installed on top of these smart poles. Hmm. Are there current barriers to smart pole deployment? Yes, of course, nothing uh, is, is easy. And of course, we I, I would distinguish two types of barriers. There's the traditional smart cities barriers related to cost deployment time and also lack of awareness uh, uh, from city governments or other stakeholders. Also sensor data privacy concerns. So these are kind of the typical barriers. More specifically, there's an additional barrier as it relates to smart poles, very much linked to the fact there will be multiple stakeholders that will have to work together in a type of co-ownership uh, relation to install these, that, that whole range of uh, hardware and solutions on that single smart pole modular solution. Things like you know, overall management, cost sharing, for example, uh, for the backhaul connection. And you can imagine that could result in you know, conflicting priorities and agendas. So there's gonna be you know, some, uh, some need for you know, better collaboration uh, and, and ways to, uh, you know, um, collectively manage this new type of uh, urban infrastructure. That's, by the way, the reason why we think that, you know, smart poles will only really become significant uh, and ubiquitous by the end of this decade, so around 2030, when all these small issues will be ironed out. Thanks so much, Dom. For a deeper dive into our full PT, 2626 report, smart poles and streetlight platforms, visit abiresearch.com.